G'day viewers, welcome to another super helpful repair video from the Goat Shed. Today we're going to be talking about the things you need to maintain your pinball machines and some of the parts that you may need. Now it's not a comprehensive list, however it's what we feel is some of the more basic stuff you need to get going. But before we start, let's remind you to please subscribe to our channel give our videos the thumbs up the like and remember if you do subscribe to hit that bell so you get notified of when we put more videos up so today is saturday the 27th of january 2024 it's 23 degrees celsius outside which is approximately 73.4 degrees fahrenheit now yesterday we had a 104 degree Fahrenheit day and the day before it we had 102 degrees. So it's been really hot and yesterday January 26th we celebrate our Australia Day which over the recent years has become somewhat more controversial. However, it was announced just on the wireless this morning that our government has decided to keep that date as Australia Day. All right, enough of that. In a video we made, oh, a couple back there, I mentioned about a little motto that our science teacher or one of our science teachers at high school used to say. And that was, look, listen and learn. Now, how profound is that? You think about that. And we should all do that in our everyday lives with everything we do, not just pinball machines. And I've used that philosophy in my trade all my life in office equipment. I used to learn off other people. Even apprentices could teach you things that were younger than you. You think, oh, I never thought of that. And that's what I like to do with pinball. I like to get on and read some of the posts in the groups and read the threads and see what people have got to say about repairing things and maybe chiming in if I can or unless someone's already answered it. And I also learn a lot when I do the fun with pinball coaching clinics, approximately once per month. We have some really good coaches on there, people really a lot of experience and we can all learn off experienced people there's no two ways about it now a lot of people have got their own pinball machine some have got one some have got two some have got 22 and more but what is it we need to maintain those machines well there are a few different things that we would recommend that you have or keep available to maintain your machines so we buy those in, like in that white box there are about a hundred of them uh, and we generally like to buy about 15 to 20 boxes at a time they're getting a little bit more expensive and you know these modern lamps that you buy of course they're all cheaply made now unlike the old GE lamps that you got in the old days you still find in machines and Osram and uh, even that other brand, um, I'm not sure how you say it, it's E-I-C-H-O, maybe it's Ico, I'm not sure. Even there, just average, but you need lamps. Now, the recommended lamp to put in your game also is a 47 lamp. Uh, they don't burn quite as bright and therefore don't generate as much heat. Now, there's much said to do about uh, what you call LED lamps. Uh, we don't even entertain those in the goat shed, so we're not talking about it. You want to put those in your pinball machine? Go ahead. But be warned, there are parts of the circuit in some games that don't accept LED lamps, and we have spoken about this in some of our other videos. They cause you trouble. And we had one here the other day that gave us some problems, and we changed it, and that problem went away. The other thing that we recommend you keep a couple of is a lamp socket. Now, they're available locally from your supplier um, and um, you, you get different styles, you know, maybe one or two of each style. We've just ordered a substantial amount 
waiting on them to arrive. Keep a spare pinball in stock. Now, they're not very expensive. They're one and one sixteenth inch, those pinballs. And keep a few spare rubbers, you know, like maybe a slingshot rubber or flipper rubbers. And or, if you don't want to do that, just buy a kit, maybe once every 18 months in home use, two years, and replace your rubbers. Makes a world of difference. Have an assortment of screws. Now, all the pinball machines, pretty much the American ones, of course, were imperial. So you've got a lot of screws in there, 632, 832, nuts, roll pins, 1 8. When I was in America last time, in 2022, I went to a hardware shop in Rockford, Illinois. I just can't remember. It's a locally owned store. The guy was super helpful. I was taken there by my friend Bob and introduced to this guy and he couldn't do enough for me and in fact when i was over there i bought those klein sockets that you see there a set of those i mean you can buy these if you're in australia you can buy these off amazon and so on and um but yeah i, I bought roll pins in this hardware store and every one i asked for every size the guy had and I was had a long chat to him and it was really good to see, a, you know, you've got your Home Depot and your Lowe's and everyone over there. But this is a family run business, been there for decades. I just cannot think of their name. It starts with an H, I think. And I'm, I'm trying to think while we talk. But anyway, that's what I did. Now, the other thing we would suggest you you try and buy and you can get them off ebay would be like just a, a relay if you've got a gottlieb game or a bally or a Williams, you might find one you might find a whole mech board well if you're going to get into it buy it because it's spare parts now we buy pretty well all our parts here the brand new ones we buy off pinball resource in poughkeepsie in new york of course, that's Steve Young. Um, he's really got a wealth of knowledge, a lovely guy. I've met him twice. I've been there now twice. And what he doesn't know probably isn't worth knowing. But, of course, there are other suppliers in America like Marco Specialties. I think they're in North Carolina. I'm not 100% certain in that. And then you've got Pinball Life. But, and, and, and a host of others, and I mean, I'm not here to promote any one firm, I'm just here to tell you we buy a PBR because he holds a Gottlieb licence and that's what most of the stuff we use. Um, he also has all the schematics for the Gottliebs available. You just can't get those online, you know, unless you have a friend who's got one, you might be lucky, but I think they're only 16, 18 bucks. So we need to support people like PBR, for certain and sure. Now, the other thing you'll need uh, is, oh, I just mentioned the schematic. It's very, if you've got a machine, get a schematic. Um, you will need it if you can't read it. If you've got a problem and you ask on one of the groups, someone might say, look at your schematic here or there and help you that way. Wax, of course, get yourself some wax. Now, paste wax is the preferred wax for pinball machines, and I think Johnson's Caranuba was highly regarded i've just ordered some Maguire's wax which a friend of mine mentioned recently and that's on its way to me now uh, and it's some super duper thing i'll try it and we'll see how it goes and of course you're going to need a little bit of singer sewing machine oil um or i think people say three in one i've used singer type sewing machine oil for over 50 years in small mechanical devices and that works really well um, the other thing that you need is or you should get is some PBR grease now that's really really good stuff it's dielectric grease and you put that on the rivets of the step units there's really hardly any other places that you need to grease up in a pinball machine but putting them on the steppers reduces friction and wear and tear on the snowshoe contacts 
There's two other important tools we're looking at here, which I did make a video on the tools you need some time ago. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier in this video. And I actually omitted those two important tools. So if you have a look through our, our video library and, and you'll find tools, go and have a look, all right, because it's quite useful. But here we have on your left, we have a points file, and here we have a switchblade adjusting tool. Now, those two tools alone are invaluable. Quite often we get in these clinics and people haven't got either of those. Okay, yeah, you can use a business car with a device appropriate on it. That's all great to clean a switchblade, but don't use pliers to bend them unless you're highly skilled, because you'll make a mess. The other thing that people can use is a Dremel. So there's our Dremel. Now, that's a cordless Dremel. That's called a Model 8220. That's worldwide. You know, you, you ask for an 8220 Dremel in your local store and they'll give you one of those. And we use a 443 brush on the end of that for cleaning switches. You get a lot of use out of those. We would no longer buy the original Dremel ones. They're frightfully expensive here down under. They're about $14 each. Oh, sorry for a pair. We now buy a bucket of them or a packet of them. And I think that packet costs about six or eight Australian dollars. So uh, you get them off um, Amazon, I think. I'm not sure. We, we, we have someone who procures those for us, but you get those. Now, the only other thing that you really do need of any importance would be a soldering iron and perhaps a multimeter. Now, a multimeter, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Don't rush out and buy a fluke. We were recently gifted this particular meter. It's, I think, from Amazon or somewhere. It's called a Habo test. It looks a little bit like the other meter. We've got the green one. This is just a lower cost one. The main thing you're interested in is having ohms on it. Now, ohms is the omega symbol that you can see there. Can everyone see that? Let's zoom in on that. Oop, too much. There, that omega symbol. All right, and it's got a speaker in, so it can emit tones. So normally this, this has got a lot of measurements on it, but on this particular one, you turn that to the lowest possible reading, which is 600. Uh, you then turn that to there, where it says OL, OL in the screen. OL means open loop. We put it on there. Now listen. You can hear the meter going off. A green light comes on on the top. And that's really all you need. A lot of people don't use meters for continuity, or in, as they do, but in pinball machines, sometimes you've got to know what you're doing because you can get other things in the circuit, so just be careful of that if you're trying to measure while in circuit. Um, but, yeah, for ohms, checking coils and things like that, they're invaluable. All right. Now, if you're going to get serious and you're going to start doing a lot of repairs or you've got a lot of machines and you want to do what we do, you might need things like um, a vice, a drill press, and it's very important to have a grinder with a buffing wheel on it. We use the buffing wheel every day. I don't think a day goes by where we don't use a buffing wheel. And of course, it's got the grinding wheel on it as well. So they're fairly important things to have. Um, if you can, you'd then go off, as I mentioned earlier, buy yourself some parts, you know, some score reels and old relays. You get lots of switchblades out of it. And maybe an old step unit. I'm going to show you some of the parts we've got in just a minute. We have shown this before, we're going to show again. Right, oh, the other thing you might consider is getting a tumbler. Now, we were just gifted one of those here recently as well. We're, we've just been experimenting with it with some old parts to see what it can and can't do. Uh, the jury's still out. We've still got a bit of work to do. We've just bought some new media that they use. It says rock cleaning or something. I'm not sure. I'll have a look at that again in a second. Yeah, it just says rock tumbler media. So, you know, that's something that we use. 
Um, you might get an ultrasonic cleaner. We have a 10 litre Vivor, that's V E V O R, made in China, sold under many different brands. Um, it probably needs replacing it, it's not working as well as it used to, but they're handy to have. And the only other thing you would need um, would be maybe a compressor, uh, an air compressor. Now, they're great for blowing out things like motorboards that get dirty um, and spray painting. You've all seen our videos on painting before. Graham's been doing that for years and years and years. Um, so there's a host of other stuff that I could mention. You know, I, I, I don't think I mentioned the little white switchblade separators. You know, on a switch you'll often see a little white lug. They're, some are a little bit smaller and, or some are a little bit longer. They're there as a separator because there's no comb. They haven't got a, a relay, a comb ladder like in the relays. Uh, so, you know, you might need some of those. And once again, they're available from your local parts supplier. Uh, let's think. Even a set of uh, hex key wrenches uh, once again, we have a, a set. I'll show you some. I just bought to bolt on the wall. That's them there. They're just a cheaper set I bought off Amazon. I got a good set of SIG chrome out the other side. And there's our tumbler just there. Now that was gifted to us as well. That's got a timer on it. And you can run it for up to one hour. And you can have it in just direct drive mode. Or you can have it in direct drive and reverse mode. So it direct drives for maybe... I don't know, a minute, stops, then reverses. That's that's pretty cool mode. And as simple as it may seem, that spray bottle that you can see just there, uh, that's got kerosene in. Uh, that comes in handy to spray at any sticking parts that are a bit hard to get at, like motor armatures. We did a video on the Williams armature. Motor armature sticking there recently. Have a look at that, and, and that'll teach you a little bit about if you've got an underrunning or overrunning score motor. Quite handy. All right, now let's show you some of the things that we have here as parts. And bear in mind, Graham has been collecting this stuff since 1985. So he's into his 39th year. So you're gonna see things that, I don't know, I don't even believe we've got it half the time. Have we got one of these? Yeah, we have. Here it is, let's go and show you what we've got. Okay, now here's a selection of Gottlieb score reels. To the right of that in the milk crate is Williams score oils. And there's another crate over there with a mixture of Williams and Bally and a oh, few the small ones. odds and ends. Yeah. Now remember, Williams made large reels and smaller reels. That's the reels themselves. And most of the ones in there are what, large reels, Graham? In there, they're the Williams um, large reels. They're mainly for um, like single player machines like from, from um, probably 71 onwards I think oh, no no sorry backwards I mean the from the 60s okay and so and then they wanted the little ones with this is a collection of um little scores for Williams and Bally and we have some up here as well that's just mainly um so when we when we um, do repairs we just grab a like a step if we need a part off and just put it back and we're it's an organized mess we know where everything is <laughs> well that's true if I can't find it, he knows where to put his yeah. finger on it. Okay, so this is just a, any locks. There's some new ones, but any part we need for a lock, we can just dig around in the old junk box and find something. Oh, and there's a lock lock wrench he just had in his hand yeah. there. A lot of these score reels are like off um, Italian machines. For, um, oops, that happens a lot. Like, I don't know, um, resale, ones like that. And um, Spanish machines. So yeah. here's uh, a selection of uh, steppers, I suppose. That's, that's off an Italian machine. Uh, ultra tank. We don't chuck nothing out. It's amazing what you find, isn't it? Got leaf score rules everywhere. Every box has got a got leaf score rule in it somewhere. And we've got more out in the other room. Uh, that's a um, solid state. That's off her. Um, Meteor. Huh. And that's a trip tank off one as well. Okay, we come along. Well, that's our binoculars there. We're looking at girls up the street. Oh, right. 
So we keep that spanky lock down to give it a look. He takes it down the pub sometimes. Uh -huh. um, more stepper chassis. We've got credit units we've got there. Out of there's, a, there's a Williams credit unit. goes up to 37 credits. Williams credit, what we've got. Like my Apollo. I've probably got about 20 Williams credit score rules. Okay. Um, there's a stepper from the... It's out of the um, single player from the 60s. Yeah, okay. And then over there we've got some, re some replay units. Um, what's that? A ball unit, I'd say. Ball count ball unit. Ball count unit, yeah. Okay, all right. We've got there's enough a, of those. some wood roll stuff. Yeah. And rat traps. Scrap. Yeah, we haven't got a lot of those. Okay. Okay, um, here's more stuff. Trip banks and various assortment of things here. As we said, it's an organised mess, but here's some uh, more step units like mm. player units. Uh, score motors. Now there's a whole selection there. One of that red one there yeah. out of one of those odd machines. And here's um, like old Gottlieb motors, parts for Gottlieb motors. We just stripped down. We need anything. All this is full of just just Rex Ram motor, Rex motor. Yeah, we, we normally rebuild our motors. So we rebuild them. So if we need a, a gear that's flogged out, we just get one out of a wreck and put it in. And remember, you can buy kits off PBR, and if you're in America, you can send them to PBR. This is our um, score mode. We've got those score modes. We've probably got, I don't know, maybe 20. Got a few. Some whims. Now, uh, some belly. we're always on the lookout for parts, and, and just last year, we bought a whole pile of coils. Now, you can see in there, there's a lot of... Um, there Williams coils. I separated them. We there. separated them, yeah. Graham sat down on the floor one day and separated them. So that's all the Williams coils. That's an assortment of everyone. Oh, there's Spanky in there looking for a coil. Did you find it? Nah. You found a bottle of beer. <laughs> and here's the, the Gottlieb ones. So that's not the only coils we have, but we bought those. We'll never use those in our lifetime will be lying dead and buried but we felt that it was important to buy them to keep these old classic games running so that's them this is a cupboard that we we use um there's milk crates in there now we've got uh more score reels in there uh we won't show you what's there's in every one score reels um this is this is Bally Williams area. This is Bally and Williams steppers, score rules, the whole four boxes, and there's um, coin doors behind there. And what have we got over here on the other side? Let's open the magic cupboard. Oh, we've got, oh, we got coin doors, coin doors, some bingo parts, uh, the bingos, and we've got a lot of plastic parts plastic. there. Uh, a lot of old second-hand drop targets. Some are pretty good. When, when we change drop target sets for people, we keep the old ones because often people need a drop target and things like that. And, uh, so let's go out in the other room before now. Before we go, Kim, mm -hmm. um, this cupboard has a bit of history that a lot of people you don't even know. This this um, wardrobe was a was a, a wedding present to my parents on their wedding day, of course, back in 1952. Wow! From um, my mother's parents. Oh, there you go. So, it's got a bit of history. Bit of a family heirloom, Graham. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, All right. Well, we'll go out in the other shed. We'll... And there's, there's Spanky's sign. There's our ultrasonic cleaner, as I mentioned. Um, we just fill that up with water and detergent and anything we need cleaned in kerosene, we put it in there in that jar goes in the rack. Yeah, it's got the rack. So that, that works well. You've seen all the results we get with that with the steppers and the kerosene, so we won't bang on about that. There's our um, our bench grinder, so yeah. as you can see, the, that side's well worn down and the grinder will, grinding wheel will probably never change in your life. No. Um, and the other, we have our workbench over here, which is a little bit cluttered at the moment. Hmm. Um, just in the middle of painting some rails. We've got, they've got to be painted. Yeah, and the Chimes got to be, be, be rebuilt. Rebuilt, yeah, chimes. There's a drill press. Graham bought that years and years ago. 1990 I bought that when I um, actually left work due to illness. Multi-speed drill press. Um, it'll be one of those ones where up under there, yeah, you the, the, change, the, the belt. change the size of the belt. But I've never changed point. it actually because I've got it set at the right speed that I like. Yeah, got the good idea with the safety 
that chuck key's tied up so you can't lose it. Yeah. Um, all right, now let's move over here and we're going to show you these filing cabinets. Now, th this is a bit of a... Well, let's look at the top of the cabinets first. I mentioned assortment of screws and stuff. Miscellaneous parts. Look at that. Everything. Yeah. Switch blades. Look at them. Yeah, this is... That's just second-hand um, fuse holders. <laughs> yeah. But we've got brand new ones. We, we, yeah. we don't, I don't ever want to know why we keep them. Nah. Um, well, here's something interesting. There's a new, new old stock um, plungers for Williams. Yeah, they're brand new. They're a bit rusty, but they will clean they, up. They clean up, and the good thing about them, if, if they're too long, you can cut them down or grind them down. Yeah. Um, what do you got there? There's some more switch blades in that packet there, isn't there? There's oh, just miscellaneous tools. Miscellaneous screws. What's in here? Um, yeah, they're, they're little ones that we use for, um, if we just need a switch blade or something. Yeah. So, we've got plenty of that. But, yeah, we, I've got thousands of them. So, why just put that in an easy container? You can just grab something if you want. Um, that's just heat shrink. Yeah, different size heat shrink. Okay. Um, this is just just um, any rubbish, like things, even like that. That's off the um, chimes. Yeah, we use that for the chimes. Yeah. Oh, look, there's um, Jeffrey Lawton's Bally Bingo Pinball yeah. Machine Book. Yeah. Graham's had that for years. That's oh. a great book for people that oh, want to learn a bit about bingo. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, let's open this drawer and see what's um, in. Oh, this. We'll start from the end. Okay. Now, this is just a rubbish drawer for, for our plastic bags that we go through a lot. Yeah. This is um, more brand new little parts like um, skirts, the bumper bodies, um, stuff for the Dremel. Oh, it's not just more, more bumper bodies. You've got you know, flipper bats, lane guides. Yeah, we just bought about 20 Gottlieb flipper bats. We've got a uh, braid for the steppers. Oh, what have we got in here? We've got light globes? Light globes, they're um, mainly 47s, but we've got some bingo globes and, and flashes and all that sort of stuff. People remember bingo globes. Some of them, particularly the ones that go in the uh, back box. Any, any moving number. Yeah, with a moving number, a 17 volt. They're 17 and a half volt. So you can't put yeah. 44s or anything in there, you'll blow um, They're just the on-off switch oh, um, right. assembly. Yep. They're the runners for the... Oh yeah, they're those score reel. We spoke about them recently, put them in Tropic Isle. Yeah. There's our punch set. Oh yeah, that's really invaluable. That's a, We didn't have that for a while, so that's a, that's our um, Imperial punch set. Mm. And that one eighth, one second from the right is the one we use... Oh, often. Often, or three millimeter it says. That'll get the pin out of the flippers. Yeah, that's right, the flipper cranks. We've got just a little, we've got little bits of um, mylar, I'm not mylar, um, perspex, perspex sitting around just in case we need it for a little plastic or something. Okay. Yeah, There's the serious stuff. Oh, yeah, yes. Now, this is um, hardware off machines, of course. There for the bumpers and kickers, flippers. Um, this heavy duty for the Oh, the uh, legs, yep. yeah, yeah. Leg, leg tees. Leg tees, yeah. Um, oh, there's old bell. Yeah, Bindi. Bindi deal. They've got um, kickers by the hundreds. So, more there. there. Bumper bodies, shaggies. See, I told you guys where everything is. And folks, so, once again, this is 39 years of collecting. That's hinges off the back door, off the back box. Yeah, wow. Well, okay, and some ancillary stuff. That, of course, is for bumpers, pop bumpers, stuff. Uh, here is just a lot of new old stock um, armatures for relays. That's cool stop brackets. Yeah. Uh, some are new, some are not, of course. Plungers. Plungers. Some new, some not. And just miscellaneous stuff. Pushes. Uh, bingo parts, we've got springs. That's all a lot of springs for there. The bingo springs. Bingo, bingo buttons. Uh, they're coin, coin plates. You can use them for pinballs as well. We've got bingo. Bags of new bingo balls. Here's all our tilt, old tilt stuff. 
uh, we've got plumb bobs for tilts every, lying everywhere. More bingo buttons, some rails, all sorts of good stuff. Right, now here we have a lot of coils. Now the ones in the bags, they're usually the brand new ones, like they're just for the Gottlieb score rails, they're like from the, I don't know, 67 to, to 72. A lot of just single relays. A lot more in there. So, and um, we'll go still just with the Gottlieb. It's more down here. So we've got nearly every coil covered and any part we need for coils and relays and, and such. These are brand new. These were donated by someone, we can't remember who, but um, we think they uh, could be solid state and some of the later. But we have used some. Yeah, yeah, depending on the owners. And that, that's important to remember, people. If, um, if it's the right ohms and it's the right coil size, you can use it. Yeah. Okay. FSAS. Yeah, um, we've got a lot of those old FSAS relays. Um, what's this point? So if, if we get one new out of the machine, we take it. That's off a Santa Grey 37. So that's compatible to that. So a lot of people don't really like that. You've got to get one that's compatible. Yeah, you it's, can't, it's can't the way the board's wired. Um, and some have got switches like this one has. And some haven't. Some haven't. But all the frames are the same, so you can put switches on if you need yeah. them. And plus we've kept all the female, male plugs we've got them for uh, mainly got them, but we've got ones for Williams and Valley as well. Yeah, I should point out, they're not all ASFS relays, so a lot of these are, are plugs. You mm. know, we someone might have um, given us a back of a machine and we just strip it down and keep well, there's it. A, there's a, a Williams match unit. Match unit. Now these are hard to come by because they, they break all the time. Yeah, they're terrible to you, you get them all the time and you always the arm which is missing out of them all yeah. the time. Okay, so... So this is the flipper department. A lot of second hand parts, but still good. Mainly the cranks, you know, you wouldn't use the baker light again. We don't throw anything away generally. But, so we kept that, because that bit there is still good. You can cut that off there. I mean, you could use it just like um, on, on, a, on a bonus stepper, because they just got to use a little bunch. The little short one, so yeah. So you can actually make one off an old wreck. Yeah. Because these holes just flog out, but this one's all right. Actually, this one's not too bad. Yeah, sure. And there you go, there is what we've got. A lot of old flipper bats and everything. There's a complete mech. If we need, we need anything off that. Got bags of flipper buttons. A lot of new stuff, but a lot of old stuff. So plenty of parts. Go. Okay, so this is the Williams um, relays, which is different from the um, the other coils that we've got for the Williams. These we just drag this out of a wreck. A lot of these come out of a, um, a Williams Spanish eyes that we just wrecked about three or four years ago. Oh, yeah, no, gee, that was about, you know, that was about seven years okay. ago. Oh, yeah, okay. is that the one we got from Charles? Yeah, and we, um, we paid, we bought a cut, gave the guy a cut. Plus there's a carton of beer that had been left out in the in the rain and the cabinet was totally trashed and yeah. the back glass was non-existent and, oh, a lot of, it was just, it just rusted to pieces. Yeah. But luckily the electric stayed the same, so we scrapped that. So anyway, so we've got mostly all Williams. Oh, now we have the Bally relays and coils. This is just a little bit, and of course, um, as, as you know, that they fit dingoes and pokies as well, a lot of these Bally coils. Yeah, now that's very, very important to remember. Uh, if you do work on Bally bingo machines... Or if you've got a... Even if you don't like bingos and you've got Bally pinball machines, if the chance comes up to buy a a wrecked bingo head, get it, because there's a lot of coils in there that'll fit pinball machines. And they fit their slot machines too. And the steppers are too. The steppers are the same. Yeah, exactly. They were all made in the same factory in, yeah. um, I think it was Belmont Street in Chicago. Okay. From memory. What have we got over here now? This is the, the big belly drawer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is... Um, let's search all the way out of a bingo. Someone made a comment on one of our YouTubes the other day that we didn't, we do mainly Gottlieb, not much Bally and Williams. Well, well, that's true. We probably see more Gottlieb. Bally and Williams, we don't see so no, many. We've got to we'll fix what we get. Yeah, we, yeah. That's a ball kicker. That's a Bally. It is complete. 
Superflipper. Oh, we've got a zipper flipper kit. I knew we had that somewhere. There it is, That's yeah. The, the valley, of course. Yeah, and there's another one outside too. Um, we've got another one for Williams, I think. Oh, okay. So, well, we've got all the old, the, the old kickers for the valleys in the 60s. Oh, yes. We've probably got 10 of them. Excellent. Uh, more ball kickers. Uh, that's off the Italian machine. And don't worry, folks, if we put any of this stuff that looks a bit rusty in mm -hmm. someone's machine, we clean it all up first and yeah. make it look as new as possible. Score real shabby. That's a gate mechanism. Look, one of the Valley of Famous with the gates in the 60s. Oh, yeah, they were too, weren't they? Yeah. I remember a game I used to play in Dixieland had a lot of gates. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's more of the There's a bell. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Okay, now we had. Here's another assortment of Gottlieb coils. I mean. Yeah, we've got, we've got knockers, knocker shut, the frames. No one's got. Generally, the only Gottlieb coils we have to buy are those 9736. They've got the small um, bobbin, you know, the. Um, where's the small bobbin? We've got the small bobbins in there. Uh, no, maybe not. But we had some in the other drawer, and maybe the series relays, yeah. uh, and occasionally 974 over. That pile of coils we had in those tubs in the other room, we've got oh, quite we've a few 974 so O's. So, so there's that. Here's more Williams stuff. And of course, we've got a super flipper set for our Williams, which is very, very rare. These don't come by very easy. Ah, there you go. Oh, so, oh we've got a swing and target for our Williams. There you go. Oh, wow. Well, they're very hard to find as well. Um, of course, we've got a few steppers. Oh, there's an up post. An up post neck for Williams. Yeah. Between the flippers. Who, who's envious, people? Are you envious? Yeah, we, he's got a lot of stuff, hasn't no, he? They're just the kickers that kick out the ball down the guts. Yeah. I've got a heap of them. Oh, multiple coils. Oh, that's, a, that's out of their, um, an early stern, solid state, by the look of it. I don't know how that got there. Um, another credit unit. That's a bingo stepper, but they're all compatible. Yeah. Oh, no, no, hang on, no, that's not a bingo stepper. That's that's a Williams. Yeah, sorry, they look similar. Yeah. That's a Williams stepper, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bit confused. Oh, one of those big ass coils off the trip tanks. Oh yeah. You don't want to touch them. Yeah, don't. Well, if you go near those and those Williams, there, um, they're 50 volts. Uh, Be careful. Oh, just, just metal bits there. That coin stuff, thing. yeah. People, surprisingly enough, we don't see many coin mixing machines yeah. here in Australia. No. Now, a lot of people in America are surprised by that, and that's why we've got a lot of that sort of stuff. Mm. In fact, earlier on we showed you we had some AX, AXFS relays. Yeah. A lot of those come from the second coin shoot, where someone may have already pinched the coil out of it. The game's got no coin mix in, so... We take them. We take the part. We yep. take it to um, keep it going. Just following cabinet schematics. Yeah, um, there are the schematics. Mainly bin goes up the top, and the pin ball them two lots. Yeah, and um, it's just a rubbish draw down the bottom. And that's about it. And we spoke about rubbers earlier on, and I think we're probably just about to end this video now. But there's our rubber department there. Yeah. Um, we recently had those uh, shelves made there for the for the rubbers, and, and, the, and the cupboards there full of um. Just gradually getting filled with new parts. That's that's our new parts area, uh, and uh, oh, we've got a Pinfest farm calendar. Oh yes, there we go. There's a the Newcastle Pinfest from last year calendar. Uh, who's the centerfold? Um, Nathan. Nathan. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Scary. Uh, okay, people. Look. Thanks very much for watching this video. As yeah. boring to some of you, it may have been. We just wanted to let you know what we felt you needed for your games and show you a bit more about our goat shed hmm. and look, people always ask us about it and I'm happy to talk about it to you and so is Graham yeah. and if anyone wants to talk to us when we're in America in September, October come and front us up buy us a beer and we'll tell you anything I'll tell you anything, yeah <laughs> okay, this has been another goat shed presentation